Welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. So here we go again today. Today is video number nine on atomic structure. So let's get started. Bam! So we're going to diagram the gold foil experiment for you. So I want to make sure that you review the previous video on Ernest Rutherford's gold foil experiment. That's critical to understanding this. And you're going to tie these two videos together and then you should see this diagram right here. So you should see in that little white box right there was the radiation source for Marie Curie. That was radium, really specifically. And then in the middle of this was a piece of gold foil, um, like two, three atoms thick, very thin gold foil. Okay, and the red beam are a stream or a diagram of a stream of alpha particles. The green circular thing was a fluorescent screen. That fluorescent screen was able to detect the alpha particles as they either traveled through the gold foil, were deflected by something in the gold foil, or bounced back. Okay, and so you should see just from this diagram that the vast majority of those particles went straight on through to the other side, like that they went straight through the gold foil and did not hit anything or were not deflected by anything. That indicated to Ernest Rutherford that the atom was mostly empty space. Now, a few of the particles were deflected, either right or left, and that is those alpha particles which were positively charged. That is, a helium nucleus is an alpha particle. So, a helium atom with the electrons ripped off, that is an alpha particle, if you will. And so, those alpha particles that are positively charged because they have neutrons in the middle of the nucleus and protons in the middle of the nucleus and without electrons. So, they're positively charged. And when they get close to something that is also positive, positively charged, just like the two same ends to a magnet, they repel each other. And that's when the alpha particles were deflected. Now, every now and then, a rare event, one in 8,000, that alpha particle actually hit something solid and was deflected back towards the uh, source of alpha particles. And that was, it hit the nucleus, okay? So this diagram right here, the one with the red and the plus sign, was J.J. Thompson's model. Now remember, Ernest Rutherford was attempting to prove J.J. Thompson's model of the atom, which was called the plum pudding model. So it had an equal distribution of positive charge and an equal distribution of negative charge throughout the atom. And if that were the case, then those um, particles would be going through that atom in a different way. But if you look lower down, now we have a nuclear view of an atom. And that nuclear view of an atom is a very, very dense nucleus. That very dense nucleus is where those protons and neutrons are, the most dense subatomic particles. And the electrons are somewhere outside of that dense nucleus. That's why those alpha particles went straight on through and were not deflected. Okay, and um, every now and then they were deflected when they got close to that orange central nucleus. Okay, and every now and then even less than that, then they were actually deflected at a very soon back right towards the radiation source. So that was crucial. And he did this experiment, that is Ernest Rutherford, Ernest Rutherford did this experiment multiple times, like all scientists do, so that they could repeat, repeat, and repeat those results over and over again. It's because he was trying to prove another model, and it didn't work out that way. So he had to redesign his model based on the data. It's all based on the data. Okay, I'm the Crazy Cat Chemist, and Jordan, again, thank you very much for the big cheese. You have given me more hats than any of my previous students ever, Jordan. Thank you very much. Give me a thumbs up if you like that video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you for more chemistry next time.